Well, good morning and welcome to Noah's Window. I should take a deep breath before today's edition of Noah's Window because I'm going to step into a very controversial place. I talked yesterday about the tensions that we all feel with what's happening in our nation and our world, and there are a lot of scary things out there. I won't lie about that, and there's a lot of trouble, and and uh, there's a lot of a lot of anger out there in in our country, especially. I want to talk though about something that really troubles me right now, and I'm not necessarily talking about New Spring. Um, I'm really just talking about the Christian community at large. And that is that I just see a lot of anger among Christians. And, and in some cases, I see anger from Christians targeting Christians. And a lot of it has to do with this political season that we've been in. I even see Christians who are on the same side politically saying hateful things to each other because they feel like somebody's not orthodox enough. And I'm like, why in the world are Christians talking to anybody with rage or anger? I mean, the word of God tells us that the wrath of, of humans never accomplishes the purposes of God. I mean, when I, when I was younger, I struggled with anger. It, it, was a, it was a challenge for me. It was a generational challenge because my grandfather had struggled with anger. And, and it had just been something. <laughs> in fact, my great grandfather was known as Wild Bill Hoover. <laughs> the thing he was known for was his anger. And it's just been a, an issue in our family for generations. And, and I wanted to be someone that, that did my best to break that, that generational cycle. And one of the verses that really helped me tremendously, and I'm using this out of, out of the old translation that I grew up with, is, the wrath of God does not accomplish the purpose, a wrath, excuse me, the wrath of man does not accomplish the purposes of God. So in other words, anytime I get angry and I start expressing rage, I've quit doing God's work. Doesn't matter if my position is right, my disposition is wrong. So I wanna to talk to us who are Christ followers today about the way that we not only talk to each other as Christ followers, but the way we even talk to those who have great hatred and animus toward us, and they're expressing that animus today. In Matthew chapter five, Jesus, and I wanna make the point here that the real authority Jesus is speaking. He said, you've heard that the law says, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. In that way, you will be acting as true children of your Father in heaven. Now, I want to go to some place that might be a little controversial, but that's never scared me before. A lot of Christians are expressing rage because they have the feeling that being true children of their heavenly Father, they have the right to express rage. Now, I just read what Jesus said, and that is if we want to express that we know that we're true children of the Father, we will even love those who persecute us. The Bible says he gives his, talking about God the Father, he gives his sunlight to both the evil and the good, and he sends rain on the just and the unjust alike. Now, Christ followers, let's listen especially to these next two verses. If you love only those who love you, what reward is there for that? Even corrupt tax collectors do that much. Well, the tax collectors were the worst people in Jesus' society. And he's saying, if you love only those who love you, Jesus said, man, the worst people in the world do that. And then I want to go to verse 47, because to me, this is the one that's speaking the most in my heart. The Bible says, if you are kind only to your friends, those who agree with you, how are you different from anyone else? Even pagans do that. Now, if you read that verse in an older translation, it'll probably use the word greet. It'll say, if you greet only those who agree with you. Now, that's the word that stands out to me because greet there means open our arms. It means to care about someone. It means to, in, a, in effect, receive them into our sphere of attention. And the Bible says, if we only do that with those people who agree with our point of view, what, what, what difference is there between us and anyone else? I mean, what Jesus is saying is, look, if you're a Christ follower, you, you should be different. Your life should be characterized by differences from the way that the world operates. I think about this a lot. I mean, here's the thing. I have strong political views. I have strong views about what's right for America and what's wrong for America. Am I troubled? If I'm not careful, I'll be troubled out of my mind because these are just really, really bad times. But I have to remember that even though I have strong views and beliefs, the way I treat other people 
can't be attached to that. You know, I, I have a lot of friends, and I'm, I made this comment. I, I was listening to a, a message that I, I brought the other day. I don't do that very often, but I happened to be at the at at the YMCA working out, and I really wanted to listen to the worship team, but I, it went on into the message, and and I made the point that I had friends on either side of this election, and that's really true. I have a lot of friends. The selection that we just have been through. I have a I have past. I have a pastor friend who's a great buddy, and I love him. He's in a different city, and um, his politics and mine are about as different as they can be. And although I don't agree, I, I know if I had grown up in his life situation and in his community, my views might be different. But I still believe what I believe. But it doesn't keep me from being a close friend. It doesn't keep him from being a close friend to me. Because at the end of the day, he loves Jesus very much, and I love Jesus very much. And um, I know this, I know that when Jesus comes, I know he's going in the rapture, and, and I'm going too. Doesn't mean he's right, doesn't mean I'm right, doesn't mean he's wrong, doesn't mean I'm wrong. It just means this, it means following Jesus is bigger than what's going on in the political world. In John chapter 13, Jesus made this comment. He said by this, Will all men know that you're my disciples when you love one another? He didn't say by this shall all men know that you're my disciples if you have the same political view. He said by this shall all men know that you're my disciples if you love one another. Now I know, I know that doing this on Noah's window is going to open a lot of criticism, and, and I'm, I'm well aware of that. And, and I'll tell you, I'll go a step further. I even understand why there would be those who would push back. I know how toxic our times are, and I understand the intentions of those who hate the gospel and who hate Christians. I totally get that. I'll be talking about that again this weekend in our series as we, we're we talking about prophecy. But I do know this. I can't negate what Jesus says, that my heart is to be filled with love. By this shall all men know we are Jesus' disciples if we have love even for our enemies. It's not easy. It's just right. Let's pray for each other. Dear God, you know the world that we live in, and you know the, the rage and the anger and just the jeopardy that those who follow Jesus Christ are in in these times. Oh, Lord, I pray that you'll help us to keep our eyes on who you are and what you called us to do in this world. I pray that you'll help us to love the people closest to us, the people that share our views but maybe have a little difference here and there. And Father, I pray that we'll love even those who hate us because we want to be your children. Not We are your children, we know through salvation, but we want to live like your children in these last days. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Well, thanks for joining me today on Noah's Window. And one more time, this coming weekend, we're going to be talking about prophecy as Jesus has told us to lift up our heads Redemption draws nigh. I've been looking forward to these two messages ever since I've known that God had given us the Look Up series to begin 2021. God bless you. We'll see you on Monday.